We are starting off this edition with these latest images coming in from the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv as Russia continues to mount the offensive against Ukrainian cities. In the latest inputs, at least 11 have lost their lives in the city of Kharkiv. This is the second biggest city of Ukraine, which has been witnessing intensive shelling. These images from earlier also showing you how the shelling targeted the residential quarters there. Massive shelling reported in the Ukrainian city. Latest images showing Kharkiv witnessing those that are shelling with the um, major rocket systems in place. Just for a better understanding of the situation on the ground, major Ukrainian cities have been under attack by Russia. This is the fifth day of the Russian offensive, which has continued even as Russia and Ukraine have sat down for talks on the Russia-Belarus border. Those talks going ahead after a lot of speculation and back and forth. Ukraine maintaining that they will not surrender even an inch of their territory. Not just that, with the talks underway at this point, the president of Ukraine had said that they have demanded withdrawal of all Russian troops from their soil, including Crimea and Donbass. Ukraine are remaining firm on its stance, while Russia continues to mount that offensive against Ukrainian cities. And as those tensions on the ground escalate, Western allies are stepping up the diplomatic campaign to try and isolate Moscow. The United Nations Security Council has called for a rare emergency special session of the General Assembly on Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The special sh session will be starting shortly. Listen in. For the first time in decades, it has called for an emergency special session in the General Assembly. The council members who supported this resolution recognize that this is no ordinary moment. We need to take extraordinary actions to meet this threat to our international system and do everything we can to help Ukraine and its people. Let's go across now to our correspondent, Susan Tehrani, who's with us from New York and has been tracking all those developments. Susan, what are the expectations at this point? So this is a special session put forth by uh, the United Nations Security Council, really uh, at the request of the Ukrainian ambassador under a resolution called uh, Uniting for Peace, which means when uh, it's a resolution put forth back in the 1950s during the Korean War when uh, the P5 members, the permanent members of the Security Council couldn't really come up with an agreement then they would put up this resolution where an emergency session, if uh, the General Assembly wasn't in session, would take place. Uh, and it's really symbolic that it's a last-ditch effort. Basically, the Security Council could do all it could, um, and it wasn't able to reach a solution, a resolution to a um, dire situation. And the situation goes to the General Assembly, and that is what we are going to see today. Now, many are asking, what can the General Assembly do, the 193 member states? Well, they could come all together, symbolically condemn what Russia is doing. Uh, but they also, uh, the United Nations can also provide recommendation for member states on how to deal with Russia uh, in order to provide peace and security for the international community, not only for Ukraine, because at this point, uh, perhaps member states and the United Nations sees this as something that's jeopardizing peace and security for, um, you know, the international community and not just the sovereignty of Ukraine. Recommendation is the key word here. Uh, we do expect, however, that the Secretary General is not going to call for recommendations of holding up arms, which, you know, previously had been recommended before, but he will perhaps focus more on a secession of violence, a ceasefire agreement between the two sides, and, of course, uh, a 
very heavy focus on the humanitarian situation and an aid uh, for Ukraine and the humanitarian crisis that that country is facing. But the meeting, yes, will be underway in earnest uh, in a short time, uh, less than 30 minutes, 10 a.m. local time here in New York, and we will bring you all the latest from inside the U.N. Uh, shortly after. Right, and uh, with the General Assembly resolutions non-binding, uh, they do carry political weight. But, uh, Susan, the criticism constantly has been that will that be enough, uh, if at all, to send out a strong message to Russia and uh, the optimism that's been running out when it comes to trying to deter Russia with these moves? Right, that, that's the concern. And, and also, uh, you know, again, there is one thing about these condemnations is they do go on record and this and a similar thing did happen for example in 2014 with the annexation of Crimea was that countries went on record and they didn't recognize uh, Crimea as being part of Russia and they didn't recognize Russia's referendum so ultimately when dealing with Russia and Crimea when they are on record at the United Nations then each country can then uh, sovereignly uh, decide how they want to uh, deal with that territory moving forward in the future. That's one aspect of it. The international condemnation, yes, as you mentioned, does perhaps carry political weight uh, moving forward in future decision making. But yes, these are mere recommendations. But I will say with all the criticism that we do um, provide for the UN, one thing that the UN has been instrumental in doing, and I think we will perhaps see something coming out uh, of the UN, is later on at the Security Council, and, and that's the United Nations humanitarian efforts. Um, that's one strong point of the UN, and the Security Council is expected to hold a meeting later on this afternoon put forth by Mexico and France uh, to help Ukraine uh, Human, uh, in its humanitarian efforts and you know that may be somewhere that perhaps member states can right. come together pitch in and help the current refugee crisis and the dire humanitarian situation that uh, Ukraine is facing but at the General Assembly again these are mere recommendations that uh, the UN can pose and the countries can decide or not decide to take them and you know, while the majority of countries can come out and condemn, there will be many countries that will abstain or not condemn Russia. Right. Susan Tehrani uh, getting us those inputs from New York. Thanks very much. And we're, of course, coming back to you as and when uh, we have further updates uh, trickling in on that front. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.